Hello YouTube and welcome to the chapter 3 of the series tut of tutorials for uh, Maxwell uh, Ansoft Maxwell or you can say ANSYS Maxwell um, electromagnetic simulator. Uh, in this chapter I'm going to talk about the eddy current type of the solutions as opposed to the chapter before we was like all dedicated to magnetostatic. Um, a quick uh, introduction of the eddy current is basically eddy current is the AC version of the magnetostatic. Not only it will calculate the DC um, st steady state uh, solution, it also can calculate the AC uh, uh, basically solutions for uh, magnetostatic uh, for the electromagnetic. Uh, as problems that you might have and um, the type of the excitation that you apply in the eddy current has to be a sinusoidal um, excitations so it cannot uh, be like a pulse or like a time variant uh, excitation however many of the solutions actually um, or many of the problems that you might have uh, can be solved and basically related to the sinusoidal excitations. So I think that uh, it would be a good uh, practice to have some tutorials about the uh, eddy current solution and um, one disadvantage of the eddy current solution compared to the magnetostatic as I said in the, chap the beginning of the chapter 2 is uh, in the eddy current solution uh, you cannot solve for the materials who are not linear uh, by non-linear I mean they don't have a linear BH curve so if your material has um, a non-linear BH curve and like have some um, you're looking for uh, uh, basically magnetization or this demagnetization of the material you cannot use eddy current solution for those but for any linear material you can use it and you can uh, enjoy the results that you will get so uh, before I start uh, this uh, chapter with the first example that I was going to give you um, I wanted to point it out one thing about um, the version of the Maxwell that I'm using so in this uh, tutorials uh, I'm using a Maxwell version 14 and as you can see it's a familiar uh, GUI or GUI uh, that uh, you saw in the previous chapters and tutorials um, however I uh, happen to have the the, the newest uh, Maxwell uh, GUI of the version 16.2 and uh, sorry 16.1 actually to be accurate uh, and it, it's a bit different uh, I can say um, there are some new uh, features and advantages in new uh, Maxwell however the prince the principles are still uh, stay the same um, um, when I'm uh, going through the tutorials you can find all the um, instructions that I'm giving you the same for the newer version of the Maxwell um, one thing that I realized working with the new version of the Maxwell is uh, the mesh operation is more advanced you get less problems with the mesh or the memory um, it, you will uh, see sometimes crashes happening uh, for example if you have a helix um, uh, basically model and then uh, this this model has a 3d um, you know if you if it's a big helix with a pitch and everything um, I, I found it in the old version of Maxwell I mean version 14 that I'm currently working with sometimes it crashes but uh, you don't have this problem in this uh, version 16 um, when you're plotting um, you have accumulate you can accumulate the plots on top of each other which you didn't have it in Maxwell 14 however these are some minor features that is added uh, very useful and handy but it's just uh, not going to change any principle uh, about our tutorials so I'm gonna be consistent and use the same uh, Maxwell version 14 that I was using um, but uh, don't be um, disappointed if I'm not using version 16 it's it's gonna be exactly the same I'm just doing it for uh, the consistency sometimes I actually might uh, use Maxwell 16.2 uh, to give you uh, the newest look and also the um, the problems that I cannot use Maxwell version 14 but till then uh, I'm, I'm replacing Max, Maxwell 14 and using that as our simulator okay um, one last thing that I wanted to say is if you're familiar with this like the the way that I'm doing these tutorials um, in the very uh, for each problems we have um, first defining the problem uh, and 
making the geometry second we have uh, excitation boundaries and setup of the environment uh, for the for the basically going through the analysis and third is to run the analysis and interpret the analysis and plot the analysis results or plots that we want and all those tutorials regarding that so in each uh, particular like design we have all these three steps okay uh, let's uh, first thing to do is let's make sure that the uh, solution type is on eddy current so I'm gonna go on the Maxwell 3d and I'm gonna select the solution type and I want to make sure that the solution type is checked to be eddy current okay um, in this uh, example I'm gonna give you a asymmetric or asymmetric uh, conduction um, path or like a part that is like made by aluminium uh, and it, uh, it's gonna look something like this um, basically uh, we have this part here and we want to check uh, this is our coil and this is our part here and we want to see for example when the coil is excited uh, how much um, uh, current is going to be uh, induced inside this um, in the, in the, inside this part and this part has some holes and as you can see the current excitation near the um, near the holes is actually going to be increased and we will we are going to see what this current is going to be induced and also this induced eddy current on the surface is going to create some magnetic field and then this magnetic field will be basically be an unintentional magnetic field radiation and if you are for example creating this part as a as a as a product as a part of a product that you're going to sell in North America for example FCC would sell, tell you that you have this amount of unintentional um, you know radiation and it's not going to be uh, so sold here in, in North America unless you fix that so this simulation basically shows you where this um, where the, what, what is the source of this unintentional magnetic fields and how you can measure it okay let's get back to um, <clears throat> to the to the part that we are going to measure before I do that I'm gonna call you I want to tell you that this is the part one part one that we are going to build and also we have a coil and that is going to be excited with a current so let's go ahead and start our first part of the design uh, I'm going to go and select a box and um, uh, create uh, just a rough shape of the part one that I'm going to create so let's call it part one here and and then I'm gonna say this is not vacuum I want to go and check uh, aluminium for example um, so that would be the aluminium and uh, back to the command uh, I'm gonna make sure that it starts from the surface uh, Z equals zero that's good and uh, I'm gonna go bring it up for two millimeter and um, also when it comes to the dimensions of that I want to have it to be minus 15 minus 15 millimeters and I want to extend it to 30 millimeters and 30 millimeters so it's going to be roughly um, kind of big uh, part there we go so now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna press control and then press D uh, to get uh, the best fit for viewing this part um, press and hold the alt key and double click on the bot on the top uh, part of the screen and you will get to the top view of your model and um, right now I want to make some um, holes and uh, drill some holes in this uh, model so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna create the uh, cylinder and uh, actually before I do that let's uh, go and check this material to be an aluminium and then select the cylinder here and say let's say I have um, actually let's let's do this um, let's actually uh, make it around here maybe around here um, I don't exactly know where is the best place let's say around here so in that case I'm gonna have like a cylinder like this big which is three millimeter radius and then the, the, the altitude I'm gonna put it two because the thickness of my part is two so it's going to be uh, subtracted from the part and make a hole for us um, so two is okay and uh, I'm gonna call this one the hole one okay and uh, I'm gonna do the same thing around here uh, as I said three for the um, and uh, two okay and I'm gonna call this one hole two and uh, I'm gonna do the same thing down there uh, 
maybe the same size when I'm doing this. Okay, and that would be two, and that would be hole number three. And finally, I have my last hole here. Oops. As you can see, I'm changing the DC on the bottom top, uh, bottom right of the uh, window, and you can actually put the number punch in the number insert using your mouse. Okay, and that would be the hole number four, which is the last hole that we have here. Okay, I'm pressing OK that, and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to select first. Um, I'm going to first select the, the part, and then I'm going to press. Sorry. First, I'm going to select the part, and then I want to press and hold the control key, and then go over the holes. One, two, three, four. And now, if I go and select subtract, I can do that by clicking on this icon, or I can go to the modeler, and then I go to the boolean, and then I go to the subtract. Anyway, uh, you want to make sure that the tool parts are the holes that are going to create it, and the bulk part is the part one. That's good. Press OK, and there we go. You have your part all selected, and then your coil, uh, the, the parts are removed. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to create the coil. Um, the coil is going to be big, and I'm going to put it a bit like on top of the, the aluminium part. So here is the thing: if you have this coil, for example, connected to this part, and you don't want to make, and well, there is some coding or something that um, makes sure that the current that is going through the coil is not going to the part. Um, you can uh, connect them on top of each other, meaning that you can start your uh, coil from the uh, the surface of two millimeters and Z surface of two millimeters, um, and in that case, uh, these guys are touching each other. But to make sure that the current is not going from the coil to the part or from the part to the coil. Uh, what you can do is you can select either the part or the coil and right click on that and go to the boundary and select uh, the isolation and that's basically for the I'm, I'm giving you a hint for the um, <clears throat> for the next tutorial, the next part of this tutorial, which is about the excitation and the boundary setup. But um, because it changes the, the design of this part, I'm going to give it in advance to you. So um, right now, I'm going to give some distance between the coil and from the part. Let's say they are not touching each other. And in that case, you don't need to create a boundary ins insulating boundary uh, for that. So let's go and create the coil first uh, very fast. Um, I'm going to have a coil from here to here, and then let's say the coil is a pretty tough coil. Let's say it's like a 5 millimeter thickness uh, in the Z, and I'm going to call this guy coil, and I want to make sure that it's made of, uh, not the vacuum, but basically the copper, because you know, uh, who would have making a coil with aluminium? Um, I can change the, the color of that to look like a copper and represent copper. And also, when it comes to the placing of that, uh, so as I said, <coughs> the part is from zero to two. That's the thickness of the part uh, in z directions. So I'm going to place this one from like let's say uh, four, you know, uh, you know, four uh, millimeter. Uh, which is two millimeter above the part that we have, okay? And um, you know, um, the rest is fine. I just press OK. So if I um, move this uh, to the different uh, direction, so you can see what I'm talking about, you can see that there is a two millimeters above here, above the part. So that's good. It's not touching each other. I don't need to create an insulating boundary for any of these because the current is not going through the air or a vacuum in this case. Okay. Um, I'm pressing um, uh, I'm pressing Alt and double click on the top so I can go to the top view again. And now what I'm going to do is I want to uh, make this uh, look a bit um, fillet. Uh, to do that, you select, press E on your keyboard and go ahead and select the edges around here. I'm pressing Control key to uh, to be able to select multiple edges. Um, let me just uh, move it a bit so you can see what I'm doing. So I'm pressing control key, this edge, this edge, and that one, and the fourth edge, and then I select the fillet, and I say I want to have a fillet for one millimeter, okay? Perfect. And now we can come back to the top view, and we can have another uh, coil to basically here, uh, what, what I'm interested in is, I'm trying to subtract, um, if the snap 
function allow me. Um, there we go. No, it didn't work. So let me do it one more time. Okay, I'm zooming in to make sure that the snap is going not going away, and uh, this is going to be uh, four millimeter, as I said, uh, so which is the thickness of the coil, and I'm gonna call it a uh, coil tool. Again, uh, this fellow is going to be a started from four. Okay, and that's okay. And just to make sure the coil was 5 actually, the thickness of the coil in the Z was 5, so for the tool I might want to make sure that it's actually 5 again, so it uh, doesn't matter that the material is not the same um, because uh, we are going to subtract that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to click the coil and then hold the control key and select the coil tool and then go and subtract these two from each other, make sure that the tool part is the coil tool and press OK. And uh, and that's pretty good. Uh, we actually have this coil ready. But you know, one thing that I forgot to do was um, for the coil tool part. What we could, and the good thing with the Maxwell is you can actually do all these uh, changes and uh, in the fillet without um, you know the coronal the chronological order. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go and um, select the part again. And uh, actually, uh, let me undo this Z, uh, Control Z that. And uh, yes, now that I have the the the, the uh, the coil part, let me call it. Uh, now that I have the coil tool. Um, Let me just make sure, yeah, that should be fine. And the position should start from four. I did too many control Z's. Uh, all right, so um, let's let's go ahead and uh, fillet the uh, edges again. I'm pressing E to get the edges. Um, let's go ahead and do the fillet for the edges of um, of the tool part as well, and make it like uh, nicer looking. So. I'm gonna go and say the fillet should be like 0.2 millimeters. Okay, good enough. And um, and then again, selecting the coil and selecting the coil tool, and then subtracting them from each other. And there we go. So we get something that it looks better, and it looks like a coil that we wanted to have. Okay, um, this is basically the end of the. Uh, part that we are going to design this part. So in the next uh, part, I'm going to show you how to do the excitations, boundaries, and also the mesh operation, which is important for this case. Uh, so see you in the next part.